Hello, and welcome to my presentation, Paved with Good Intentions, George Creel and American Propaganda in the First World War. President Woodrow Wilson and George Creel created the Committee on Public Information, an American propaganda machine designed to inspire support for the U.S. entry into the European conflict. The country was relatively comfortable in its neutrality at the time, as there was no real existential threat to the United States. Wilson's reasons for entering the war were mainly ideological. He wanted to make the world, as he put it, safe for democracy. Only a few months earlier, he had won his re-election using the slogan, he has kept us out of war. So Creel's primary task was to convince the nation to do an about face and now go to war. In doing so, the two created a monster with ramifications beyond their intentions. One of the first challenges Creel and the committee faced was trying to raise funding for the war. The government did not want to raise taxes and it did not want to print extra money and risk inflation. So the U.S. Treasury Department came up with the idea for Liberty Bonds. Creel and the committee went to work uh, encouraging Americans to invest in the war. They used sex appeal. They used fear. Here we see an imaginary attack on New York City. And they use celebrity. Here we see Douglas Fairbanks, one of the biggest film stars at the time, holding Charlie Chaplin up in the air at a Liberty Drive on Wall Street shortly before the stock markets opened. By the war's end, 20 million individuals had invested in the war at a time when there were only 24 million households in America. The Liberty Bonds had raised $17 billion, or roughly two-thirds of the war's cost. George Creel and the CPI had effectively sold the war. One of Creel's secret weapons was a group known as the Four Minute Men, a group of volunteers who wrote and delivered speeches based on topics provided to them by the Committee on Public Information. Four minutes was the exact amount of time it took to change film reels in the er early days of cinema. The Four Minute Men would take this break as an opportunity to speak to a built-in audience and deliver the message, whatever the message was that the committee wanted delivered, whatever week it was, whether it was enlisting in the army or purchasing war bonds, the Four Minute Men would not speak over the film and they would speak within that four minutes exactly. Creel believed that the modification of public behavior and thought through manipulated information was a means justified by its end. He did not see the CPI's activity as a danger because he believed they were merely persuading the public to do the right thing. Despite Creel's assertions, the CPI stifled free speech. Supported by the Espionage Act of 1917, pacifist voices were suppressed throughout the U.S. and labeled as treasonous. Here we see a cartoon from the pacifist magazine known as The Masses, one of close to 50 that were removed from circulation by the U.S. Post Office. In 1918, the CPI released a pamphlet known as the German Bolshevik Conspiracy. The pamphlet contained alleged proof based on the Sison documents that the Germans had funded the Bolshevik Revolution and that there was a communist plot to invade America. The documents are the origin in many ways of the Red Scare that followed and led to the nefarious McCarthy hearings of the 1950s. Prior to World War I, the Encyclopedia Britannica hardly contained an entry for propaganda. By 1919, it took up 11 pages. George Creel shut down the CPI upon the war's conclusion, claiming it had no place in peacetime. Yet he had established a precedent that would endure in times of war and peace. George Bush's weapons of mass destruction echoed Creel's work in the CPI. A democracy relies on choice, and choice relies on information. When information is distorted or malleable, it is questionable whether a country can be safe for democracy. Thank you very much, and I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. Good luck to all of you, and happy holidays.